If you've got the family cat or dog at your feet right now, you probably know how the companionship of animals can make life more bearable. Research has proven that pets can enhance lonely lives and even have medical benefits for hospital patients. But now the bond of a faithful animal is proving a godsend for children who suffer autism. Not only calming wild behaviour, but perhaps unlocking parts of their brain and enabling them to learn and to communicate better. It sounds incredible, even to scientists trying to fathom why, but I've seen the results myself. Families at their wits' end whose lives have been turned around by the animals they love. It's OK, it's OK, <laughs> This is autism at its worst. Children so emotionally bewildered, so disconnected from life, that only an uncontrollable rage can express their frustration. It's a condition arguably as bad for the parents as it is for the children. Welcome to a day out with the Woolies. Rachel Woolley is the mother of Jake and Cooper, two good-looking twin boys, six years old, and, unusually, both are autistic. I call these moments um, <laughs> the challenging moments. <laughs> this is a video diary of a desperate housewife. With two autistic boys, a simple shopping excursion is only ever moments from chaos. I hate seeing him like this and thinking that there's nothing I can do to help him. It's awful. There's nothing I can do as a mother. I can't do anything. After years of struggling to connect with her boys, trying to break into their impenetrable autistic world, Rachel was desperate. Did you know at the beginning of all this how strong you would turn out to be? Hmm. Because you are. It calls upon inner reserves that no one would know they had as a parent. It does. It does. I just think that my love for them is so strong that I'll never give up on them. But then a remarkable breakthrough appeared in the amiable form of Albert the Labrador. Albert's a specially trained autism assistance dog and safely harnessed to their new best friend, the boy's behaviour is much different. They've gone from this... ..to this. They're so well behaved with Albert. Jake's anxiety is gone, so Albert's relieved all that anxiety and tension. And he's a different boy, you can see for yourself. They have an amazing bond. Jacob. It's funny because they won't look into my eyes and if you try and get eye contact with them, they'll do fleeting eye contact. Yeah. But with Albert, they grab his face and they want Albert to look into their eyes. When they look into the dog's eyes, you're not jealous or envious. You're, <laughs> you're grateful, aren't you? I am. I am. I'm grateful. As I was to discover, the connection some believe we have with the animal world is being used more and more as a therapy for autistic kids. It even has a name, anthrozoology, the study of the relationship between people and animals. Here they are. Call it the pet theory. It's new and experimental, but some experts think it offers a lot of hope. As a parent, you want anything that works. You want to help your child, you want to make them happy. And one of the things that can make them happy is an animal. So you'd recommend this? Oh, absolutely, yes. Get him, Albert. Come on. Nuzzle, 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 nuzzle. Professor Tony Atwood is Australia's leading autism expert, and he's convinced there is some mysterious link and a helpful one. It's a sense of engagement. If you can't understand people, you might be able to understand and relate to an animal. There were times when we were filming this, I must say, that it did seem just a little bit wacky to me. It's not wacky. <laughs> it's part of human nature of relating to animals. So I think really what we've got to do is, is look at what will help that individual, refine it, improve it. It's not going to cure autism, but it might make their day. This was Rowan Isaacson in the frightening grip of an autistic tantrum. 
For years, Rowan's parents, Rupert and Kristen, tried every conventional therapy available near their Texas home, but nothing would stop the autistic storm. It's like the inner wall of your skull is being grated, so I mean, yeah, you, you go out of your mind sometimes. <laughs> Just when it seemed like there'd be no end to their torment, a chance encounter with a neighbour's horse called Betsy improved their lives dramatically. One more hippo. One more hippo. For the first time in years, Rowan's hysteria was replaced by blessed calm. The first time I asked him if he wanted to get up, he gave me his first ever really lucid, proper response. He said, up. And at the time, back then, when he was that young, I mean, that was revolutionary for him. I was like, God, I can't believe this. Before long, Rowan began talking coherently. He's a nice horse. And remarkably, his capacity for concentration and learning vastly improved. This horse, Betsy, was a beginning of all. It, she was. I mean, I basically owe everything, um, every, everything that's positive in our life right now to this animal here. Should we go that way? Yeah. All right, let's go. What I found was that when Rowan was on the horse, the recept learning receptors of his brain were so active that you could use that time. So w that was a great revelation to me. And then it was like, oh, I see, the horse itself can be a classroom. Would you rather like a lion or a cheetah? Lion. One of the things that horses will do is give a sense of rhythm. And in the research on autism, we notice that there's a lack of internal rhythm. So if there's a rhythm of a horse and the person is relaxed, they coordinate their movements, not only to speak, but also to concentrate. And so you get better progress with the programs that you're introducing. So the act of riding stimulates the balance centers of the brain, may at the same time stimulate other things. Yes. But something skeptical inside me says, where is the science? Where can you demonstrate this over and over again and prove it to be true? I think it's a question of waiting. Eventually, the research, I think, will show that there's something going on. But the lack of research shouldn't stop us trying and seeing if it works for an individual. And now the pet theory is expanding to new horizons. <coughs> Declan Pentecost's mum, Kim, has brought him to the north coast of New South Wales in the hope an encounter with dolphins can help soothe his constant frustration. Their minds work in different ways and, you know, to find different things to wake their mind up or find things that, things that they are interested in and that they can go on with in life. Try things that even your sceptical mind might tell you can't Absolutely. really be so. And if it works, it's worth it. Within seconds of spotting a pot of dolphins, Declan is a seemingly different kid. <laughs> He's attentive, focused, and best of all, no longer raging. <laughs> How happy's he? He's very happy. Yeah. I have children, and, and nothing would be a worse affliction I can imagine than seeing them unhappy. No, this is ecstatic. This is great. Yeah, this is good. And we, we try to you know, do everything we can to give him a good life and a happy life. And this is certainly an experience, isn't it? Well, he's just a normal kid, isn't he? Right Today, normal yeah. kids, enjoying the dolphin. I think there's what we used to call the sixth sense, which, as humans, we may have lost, but animals may have. You're a scientist, but you're happy to talk about a sixth sense? Yes, I think there is a sixth sense. I think there's a sense of a meeting of intelligent minds that appraise each other. Now, that person with autism may not be able to speak, but I think there is a sense of connection that occurs with a dolphin and another animal that we need to use. It's OK, Albert's here. For the Woolley family, that connection has proved a lifesaver. Where's Jack? Where's Jack? Albert isn't doing this entirely by instinct. <laughs> He's been specially trained by a charitable group of dog lovers called Righteous Pups. Good boy. Good boy. 
So the dog is just taught to go over and disrupt that behaviour. Lay here currently like Raz is doing now and helps lower my blood pressure, lo lower my stress about sitting here talking to you right now um, and just makes me feel comfortable. Kelly Stevens is currently training 30 pups. And scientists at Monash University have undertaken a study to explain why it seems to work. Will he do it for me? Oh, I'm sure he's probably sure disrupting behaviour. Sort of little autistic tantrum is uh, takes no acting ability on the part of a television reporter. That's I can it. tell you. Well, How let's have it. Let's have a go. <coughs> let's touch. The dog has me. It works. Good boy, good oh, boy. Thank you, I feel a lot better. That's great. <laughs> Isn't he lovely? It's beautiful. Beautiful boy. Yes. I think I'll take one. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, I have a little bit One theory why a distraught child will let an animal in and not a parent has to do with the complex way our brains read a face. Face reading is an ability the autistic appear to lack. As I look at you, your face is so animated, your eyebrows move, your mouth moves, your eyes move various places. We have about 400 facial expressions that are there in a fraction of a second. And those with autism and Asperger say, I can't read it. It's like presenting someone with a book in a completely foreign language. On the other hand, an animal has how many facial expressions? Well, probably only three or four. And that's it. Animals aren't sarcastic. Uh, there is no irony. <laughs> There's no double entendre. They are very direct. They show their experiences very, very clearly. Humans lie. Animals don't lie. What about, are there any kind of wild pigs that live in the desert? Yes. What, what are they called? Back in Texas, it's been four years since Rowan Isaacson connected with Betsy. Ride. Ride is a verb. Very good. He's doing well in school, is happily socialising with other kids, and at the age of seven is finally toilet trained. There we go, baby. His devoted dad, Rupert, can't scientifically prove the horse did it, but he's so convinced of the benefits, he's introducing other autistic kids to animal therapy. Rowan did not get cured of his autism. However, the one thing we didn't expect when that diagnosis came Mm. was that autism could be a gateway to happiness. Yeah. We didn't expect that. You have gone from devastation to great pride. Yeah, I am. I'm amazed by him. Yeah. I'm amazed by him. None of the people who support the pet theory are claiming that it's an autism cure-all. But they do believe that it's an avenue of treatment worth exploring and that it's gone a long way to making their difficult lives a lot more bearable. And what Albert has given them that they didn't have is a friend. That's right. A friend, someone that they can love, that doesn't require anything from them. A friend who looks out for them too. That's right. He does. He's like another parent <laughs> for them. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.